Hi, this is Dr. Manoj Chakraborty. I am a gynecological oncologist. I make patient education videos on complex gynecological topics. Today's topic is chocolate cyst. But if you want to know only a little bit of chocolate cyst, this video is not for you. But if you are like me who wants to know more about a condition before you make decisions, then this is your destination. Today we are going to discuss something which is very common and a lot of questions exist in this field that is known as chocolate cyst. Ovarian cysts and chocolate cysts, they are quite different entities and it's very important to understand what chocolate cyst is. So we are going to have a quick discussion regarding what chocolate cyst is, what are the treatment and why it actually happens in our body, in women's body. Another important part of chocolate cysts that we are going to touch today is this very important issue which we do not usually discuss with the patient in the clinic because it's a little bit complex to discuss but hopefully today this video will add this extra value to you. During my stay over years and years in England um, where chocolate is very commonly tasted and enjoyed we didn't hear this name chocolate cyst that much. It used to be um, known as endometriotic cyst. I guess it's a little bit difficult to pronounce and that's why I think sometimes people um, simplify it as a chocolate cyst. If you have thought by hearing the name of chocolate cyst that this cyst is full with Cadbury chocolate. I hope Cadbury company will excuse me but there is no chocolate of Cadbury in here at all. It is basically it's a little bit brownish blackish pent up blood which occurs within this cyst. Now let's first look into what is known as cyst first. Cyst is basically it's a contained area where there is a little bit collection of fluid and of course abnormal collection of fluid. In ovarian cysts this collection happens within the ovary. Simple so far right. So what is the chocolate cyst then? Chocolate cyst is when there are some blood which gets accumulated within the ovary and remains there over weeks and months and years and eventually the redness of the blood gets transformed into a little bit blackish brownish material it can be a little bit tarry as well and these are known as chocolate cysts the patients never see the color of the chocolate cysts at all but we surgeons when we operate inside patients abdomen for chocolate cysts we see lot of colors from chocolate cyst and it's actually a spectrum of the color. If you think that it starts from red and it ends up in black, then you will have bright red. If it is a fresh bleeding, it could be a little bit darker red when the bleeding is a little bit old. And then it, will, it could be a brownish bleeding when bleeding is a little bit older. And it could be more blackish and then black. So it's a kind of a spectrum of fluid material that means the old blood which stays within the chocolate cyst. As I say often repeatedly that ovarian cysts and chocolate cysts they sound similar but they are very different entity. Their treatments are different, their origin is different, their natural history that means when the cyst starts and how the cyst ends so whether it ends in treatment or whether it disappears in the women's body that is called a natural history so the natural history of normal cyst and chocolate cyst both are different so the fundamental thing is basically that these two cysts are different i may be sounding repeating this but it is very important for you to understand that these two are different Chocolate cyst is usually a manifestation of a condition known as endometriosis. This is a very common condition and it's not cancer, but there are some caveats to it. We will have a look at it today. So what is endometriosis? Normally, the period blood which starts within the uterus, it goes out through the natural passage to outside. If you do not know what is uterus and what are ovaries and how the period blood forms then we will link it up somewhere that you will be able to watch our series called Anatomy with Coffee where you will have a very good understanding of gynecological organs be it ovary, uterus and fallopian tubes and so on. So let's come back to the point. So the period blood which is the menstrual blood which, is, which goes out through natural passage Sometimes, because of various reasons, and don't ask me why, because that will be a big book chapter in our textbook, so I'm not going to 
discuss this today but there are some reasons why that this period blood can sometimes happen inside the abdomen on the ovaries and this period blood does not find any natural passage to go out because abdomen is a contained place if it hap if the bleeding happens within the uterine cavity it is open downward so the bleeding goes down but if it happens around the ovaries that is ovary is a gynecological organ but stays within the cavity of the abdomen and it's a captive organ so therefore the blood cannot go out from there so eventually bit and bit and bit of blood drop by drop gets accumulated over weeks and months and sometimes years to form this chocolate cyst so often patients ask me tell me dr chakraborty how do i know if i have got chocolate cyst chocolate cyst is sometimes detected on ultrasound scan when the scan is done for period problems or abdominal pain or something like that and sometimes it gets incidentally detected incidental detection means that suppose someone is having an ultrasound scan for say gallbladder problems or some other problems of uh, like indigestion or something like that and sometimes they find out this chocolate cyst which may not be causing any direct symptoms that time but it gets diagnosed in ultrasound so most of the chocolate cysts gets diagnosed on ultrasound scan and it leads us to a very important question what are the symptoms of chocolate cyst the symptoms of chocolate cyst is a spectrum just like chocolate cyst color that it ranges from red to black various spectrums and the symptoms as well it could be varied it can range from no symptoms at all that means it is yet to give any symptoms or gave symptoms a long time back but now it is silent at this point and sometimes it causes a lot of symptoms and sometimes patients need to get admitted overnight for pain problems and interesting thing is ovaries are very elusive organ and you have spoken about ovary in our anatomy with coffee series i will link it somewhere have a read but ovaries are very important organs in a sense that the symptoms of the ovary and its gravity of the problem the relationship is non linear that means normally we would expect that if the problem is higher we will have higher symptoms worse symptoms but it is not true in the cases of ovary sometimes we see big ovarian tumors but they are not having a lot of problems but sometimes we see that the chocolate cyst even if it is a very pea sized or very tiny chocolate cyst and sometimes we see that causes a lot of problems in women that sometimes they need to have injections after injections medications after medications to treat chocolate cyst if we go by symptom we sometimes get uh, deceived regarding the severity of ovarian problems science actually uh, took a lot of uh, years to understand over 90 years of research has gone into endometriosis to understand why sometimes endometriosis causes so much of problem with the chocolate cyst or something like that and sometimes it does not give any symptoms actually what comes out as of now there are many theories as of now the predominant theory is basically the when the chocolate cyst or endometriosis eventually they actually destroy the nerves around them so if they can dis if they have destroyed the nerves around them then of course the women will not have much problem uh, that means the pain if the nerve endings are still alive and um, you know very sensitive then people will have a lot of problems with endometriosis the chocolate cyst even though it is not a cancer but it can frequently involve the neighborhood organs of the uterus and gynecological organs in the front the neighborhood organ is urinary bladder and in the back these are bowels and on the sides there are blood vessels and various other nerve structures in lower abdomen of women this is because the inflammation it causes it attracts lot of organs around it then what are the treatments of endometriosis or chocolate cyst the basis or the the mainstay of the treatment is based on ultrasound evaluation of lower abdomen of women and this is very important because there are some pitfalls here which we'll discuss in a minute but we get guided mostly by ultrasound scan and sometimes we do another important scan called mri scan to understand what is going on over there there are 
mainly three treatment options for endometriosis. One is that if the endometriosis cyst or the uh, chocolate cyst is small and it is not causing much problem, then wait and watch and follow up could be an option. The other option could be taking tablets or sometimes monthly injection. And the medical treatment, that means non-surgical treatment of endometriosis are aimed at a very basic understanding of women's physiology. That means how the women's body works. Basically, the endometriosis or chocolate cysts gets its power when there are menstrual cycle happening. That means when there are estrogen and progesterone coming in waves in women's body and which actually feeds the chocolate cyst. It doesn't feed like feeding, but it's just a metaphor that it feeds the chocolate cyst. So basically, if we can abolish this monthly hormonal cycle of women, then the endometriosis or the chocolate cyst sometimes gets taken over or healed by body. Here we have to understand a basic philosophy of this endometriosis treatment. If someone wanting a pregnancy, maybe in just two weeks or months or something like that, then the medical treatment may not be that suitable for endometriosis purely because the medical treatment actually abolishes the female hormonal cycle. It not only treats endometriosis or chocolate cyst, it also prevents the ovaries from bringing out eggs. And of course, if there are no eggs, there will be no pregnancy. Apart from a medical um, treatment for endometriosis, there are a lot of lifestyle changes that you may do that can help endometriosis. Female hormone estrogen and progesterone are the major driving factors for endometriosis. Now the estrogen comes from a lot of environmental sources and it may come from other organs of your body like fatty layer, extra fatty layer and obesity and uh, extra fatty tissue in your body. So if you can reduce your um, body fat then sometimes the endometriosis problem can be uh, sorted on itself and actually these lifestyle changes are always always advised along with the medication because it amplifies the the good effects of the medication but sometimes there are no other option other than to do a surgery now we are going to discuss about what are the main roles of surgery in these cases it is of course complex and I will not be able to give you exactly all the details about the surgery and why the surgery is done because it is individualized. One patient may need surgery, her friend may not need surgery. So everyone is different. However, the mainstay of the surgery of endometriosis is basically that to remove the offending problem. That means to remove the endometriotic cyst. The surgery, again, Whenever we talk about endometriosis and chocolate cyst, it's a spectrum. The surgery is also could be a spectrum. The surgery can range from just removal of the cyst wall. It can also involve removal of the cyst. It can involve removal of the cyst and the offending ovary if the problem is significant. And sometimes the extreme end of the spectrum is basically that when not only the ovaries, that means where the chocolate cyst forms, but also all the gynecological organs sometimes may need to be removed in order to safeguard the quality of life of women and in order to treat endometriosis. Everyone needs a different type of surgery and that is a very fine balance and who needs what surgery and it is discussed between the doctor and patient before the surgical treatments are followed. But one very basic but very important aspect that is associated with the surgery because with the surgery we will be able to get a tissues from the offending cyst we will be able to attain a very confirmed diagnosis regarding endometriosis after surgery which is not possible on medical treatment so if there is any doubt regarding the nature of the cyst and whether it's a chocolate cyst or whether it is any other problem therefore sometimes the surgery is also needed in order to actually diagnose the problem when we talk about the diagnosis under microscope that means whenever we take out some tissue from the body under the microscope to diagnose the actual nature of the problem which is called a biopsy or histopathology or a microscope test or whatever the patient invariably asks the important question doctor could the chocolate cyst be cancer or could endometriosis lead to cancer we are not going to discuss it today we'll keep it for next day's video have a good day